Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Donnybrook. And before this hour is over, as a matter of fact, in about 10 or so minutes, we'll tell you how you can join us at the next Donny Bash in June of next year. Meanwhile, lots of topics to talk about. Let's meet the panelists, starting with Wendy Weiss from KTRS. Mr. Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Ray Hartman from KTRS, RawStory.com, and the Riverfront Times. And Alvin Reed joining us from the St. Louis American. Well, Ray Hartman, it looks like we have breaking news courtesy of the St. Louis Business Journal, which is reporting that Centene, the healthcare giant based in Clayton, Missouri, number 23 or number 24 in the Fortune 500, has announced that is discontinuing its plans to have a second headquarters featuring 800,000 square feet, 3,200 employees, and a billion dollars in development in Charlotte. So the plan about a year ago, according to then the late CEO Michael Nydorf, was to have co-headquarters, St. Right. Louis and Charlotte. At least for now, Charlotte is out and St. Louis is in. What's your take here? I don't know how any of us has a take. You have to know the members of the board of directors. I will say it it certainly sounds like they might be getting acquired by somebody. In other words, I think it's a possibility that this is one of those big corporate mergers and the, the buyer is saying, you know, we're not going to have this extra headquarters. It, there's no way really to read it. You know, when they announced it, Centene's been in trouble for a while. They've had problems. They had a huge number of lawsuits from states. They had a big reserve over a billion dollars because of lawsuits for overcharging for Medicaid. And that was known. And in fact, when it was announced, I looked it up just before it came out, before the, when they announced it, they said it was despite cuts everywhere else that they were going ahead. It was Charlotte. My takeaway is uh, Centene, this is not a company where you say, my word is my bond. I think Clayton, the city of Clayton needs to continue to go to try to recapture its, uh, the, the tax credits. Uh, the, the promises the, the made. Pro well, the credits and the, the, the tax breaks that need to be recaptured because Centene uh, canceled that auditorium here that they committed to. But I will say this. I don't think hmm. it necessarily suggests they're going anywhere from St. Louis. I, I, well, I, 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 yeah, I, I think, Ray, you're trying to find the cloud and every silver lining. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this, no, I'm, you know, at, at least, at least temporarily, let's say, hey, this is good news but because we all bemoan the fact that Mr. Neerdorf was taking the company to North Carolina, and that just was ominous and didn't look good for us. And suddenly they're not going to North Carolina. So at least for now, at least for a few minutes, let's say, hey, this is <laughs> good. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, point taken, but the, I don't think that they were take, leaving St. Louis to go to North Carolina. They were just adding North well, Carolina. Well, it, it sounded but awful. If you're, okay. if you're the board of directors, does that sound like a good idea, really and truly, to have two separate headquarters? Three. Well, I, but, but I think ultimately there would have been one headquarters and it would have been in Carolina. I don't think they ever right. intended for it definitely to, just to have two. two. Yeah. All right. Um, one while it turned out through the lawsuit because you know the nfl messed it up we kind of came out with a settlement i don't think this would be true but i do think we do need to take mm. the step that we we didn't take with the rams and right now go to them right now and say like all right what do you need to stay 30 year lease stay here in clayton now they'll probably say some ridiculous number and then you could say no or whatever but at least we need to go there because Ooh. i think they're moving that's and not I think, hang on a second. Yeah. I think they're. Hey, See, couldn't I, I, it also I, be? That's not our corporate I, board. Could, couldn't no, it no, be? No, wait, well, they, wait, they, they don't make 30 year deals. Ray, I understand that. Right. Okay, I'm just voicing opinion. No, I get it. All right. Okay. I, I, I took some it. business courses. No. I understand. <laughs> yeah. that. Okay. Well, let me I, ask you this. I, I, it, like since you took was, business courses, I want to ask you. <laughs> isn't it possible that the landscape in America has changed and a lot of people want to work remotely? And you've got a lot of 
high-tech, smart people for Centene who don't want to move to either North Carolina or St. Louis, and they're going to be working out of Bozeman or Malibu or N Brooklyn, New York, or wherever. But, but and that might be the new and model. I, and well, I did think that Michael Nydorf, may he rest, I, I do think that he used that carrot because of some deep-seated issues with the state of Missouri. And now that he has gone on to his reward, the board of directors is not, they're, they're not bound he, but by I that. Think that what I think they'll be the looking board. for is a tax-free state, first of all, or someplace they would like to see the business be. All right, um, well, uh, but I do no, think no. They, they, they got a ton of tax breaks in Charlotte. The well, dwarf, the ones they right. got here. But I mean, they were promising an auditorium, right. a hotel, and some housing, but they got, this was a multi-billion dollar I, development did, in North Carolina. did North Carolina ever expand Medicaid as he did? I believe they did, yeah. They yeah. did, but that's okay. Not, you gotta, and we did these too. These companies... Right. Don't this is we're way past the the long term company. Everything's about mergers and acquisitions now. The idea that you can sit down with a company and talk to them about and again, I'm not disparaging your. I don't anything about business. Did you but take the, business courses? I, I didn't. <laughs> but the, I don't. I'm, I ain't a business expert. I will particularly at big businesses. I will say this: you cannot. It, it's it's a cautionary tale for to cities like St. Louis and. Charlotte, you cannot count on these mega corporations for long-term anything. Well, well, you I, just, well that's I, so I, true. I, I that think, is I true, think, Ray. Too, the idea of uh, everybody, like Charlie says, going into business and building big campuses, everybody's looking at, askance at that now yep. and thinking, we don't need all this real estate anymore. The, the, and and so, so this is good that they've decided we're not going to go ahead to North Carolina. We'll keep our headquarters. We still need the headquarters. We'll keep it in St. Louis. That's not what they're saying. That's what I'm trying well, to say. Well, that's the way I'm interpreting it. I, 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 I like, like but, your but no, but Ray, optimism. If, if that's you look, not what they're saying. If you look outside of the Centene headquarters right. in downtown Clayton, and you can look at the tenants, it looks like there are more firms in there than there are really Centene employees. I mean, it looks like they're more of a landlord than a well, corporate they, headquarters. They, they're going to be in Charlotte because they, they have just about completed an 800,000 foot project. <laughs> yeah. And what the paper in Charlotte said, the business journal in Charlotte said, and we didn't have a chance to read much of it, they said, well, it's going to, they said there's going to be tenants, there'll be tenants that they just they're won't just be Centene. They're just not Centene. centene. And, and okay. I guess they yeah. will be. Now let's move on. Um, we'll follow this story as developments warrant. Wendy Weiss, I want to ask you about two stories this week that I thought uh, should, I guess, get all of our attentions. One would be Missouri test scores, according to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, are still down. In fact, they're still down lower than pre-pandemic levels at the elementary and high school levels. Um, right now, when it comes to English and reading and science, it's south of 50% across the board. At the same time this week, the city of St. Louis Public Schools announced, hey, eight schools this year will start the year without bus service because there aren't enough drivers. So I'm looking at both of these stories thinking, hey, is it time maybe that everybody get together and do what Kelvin Adams told these two last week, Alvin and Bill on Next Up, and that is take the Stan Kroenke money and bring it over to the schools. Well, certainly a, a portion of it, to, to be sure. I mean, it, it has to happen. It's completely unfair that these children and their families are left high and dry, and it's beyond, it's beyond the scope of Dr. Adams. I mean, this is you, 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 the, the, the entire nation as we begin this school year, down thousands and thousands of educators. And I still can't figure out where they went. Where, where, where did all of these people go? They were here one minute, now they're gone. I don't believe that that many could have taken early retirement. But we are, we're, we're putting these children in such a position that they, there, there's no way that they can make it up later. You know, it's a, it's a can that we can't well, keep kicking. What, what about a six day week or a 12 month school year? No. Yes, yes, anything. No. Anything that all of the, if all of, because I didn't take education courses in college, um, <laughs> anything that, that leading educators can, can build consensus on, it has to happen. Something drastic has to happen. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule that out. What I would, would rather do for, the, for low achievement schools is reduce class size and provide security. So if we're going to take that money, then I said, like, all right, we're going to pay teachers, but we can promise them this. You won't have any more than 12 kids, and this school will be secure. 
and I think you would see a noticeable difference. I also think it's a little too soon to say there's going to be this immediate bounce back after a COVID, pandemic. After a pandemic. I, yeah, this, That's going to take a while. I don't know how long, but I think it's too early to start talking about they're lower than they were pre-pandemic. Well, technically, it's been two and a half years since the big since the shutdown. And if you were in first grade, I mean, you're about to start fourth grade. That I, I don't see how well, you that's could. What, write that's that what Desi said. Uh, well, well, we knew they were going to. We knew that the scores were going to go down. Right. The kids that remote learning does not work mm -hmm. for many, many, many kids. Right. And I love Alvin's idea: small classrooms and pour all that yeah. money into school. Give it a chance. I love the idea, but let's put it. Let's get a little realism here. Another, if I can, uh, let me sure. let me bring another cloud for your silver <laughs> lining, and that is with the city and county government looking at, if you talk about the Rams money, I think the odds of either of those governments are going to be open to giving this money to the St. Louis Public Schools are slim and none. No, I disagree. The city, I guarantee you, will give St. Louis Public Schools money. Uh, I can almost guarantee that. We'll now, what see. the county does, I, I don't know. Well, I would look, I'd right. look at, other than the mental health clinic idea that I gave. Uh, uh, it's I a think good one. It's we like that. The Hartman no, plan. Liked that. Nobody liked that. The Hartman plan. Nobody liked this. I, no, I liked it. But but the point is seriously, I, I one of the reasons I suggested it was a city county thing. I, I my sil my cloud for your silver lining is I think it's very unlikely to happen. I think it's a good idea, by the way. I just think it's not. So what happen. are we well, going to well, do I, with these children? I, I I'm not good arguing point, with you. I just think and it's between mental stuff. health it and education. Stuff. You can't find a cause that's worthier. I, I agree. Can but, you, and, and yeah. don't yell at me, but can you call up the National Guard for something like school bus drivers? No. Yes. No, oh, no, may, oh, Massachusetts oh, has already oh, done oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. For, I'm we sorry. I thought you meant that now. No, yeah. you're right. That's, 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 you're, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Hey, um, we'll have more good points and uh, discuss more topics in a moment. But first, we want to invite you to join us for Donnie Bash 2023. No, it's not too soon. Here are the details. It's hard to think of a show that is as popular as Donnybrook that it's been here at 9 PBS for 35 years. Hi, I'm Marianne Carson, and welcome to our break for Donnybrook because we are so excited about the new date for Donny Bash. It's going to be next year, the year 2023, and the date is Thursday, June 15th at the Sheldon Concert Hall. And you can be there, it's so easy, and we want you in the audience for Donny Bash. At $75, that's the cost of a Donny Bash ticket, or if you like, you can have your choice of the Donny Brook mug. But here is the best deal of all, and that is when you become a sustaining member to 9PBS for $12 a month, you will receive not only two tickets to Donny Bash for June 15th, but you will also receive that nine PBS mug. And what a wonderful way to show that you support great television on nine PBS. Plus, you're gonna be there in the audience for Donnie Bash. And what a great evening. The doors open at 5.30 for you at the Sheldon Concert Hall. Parking is a breeze. There are refreshments that are sold before the taping. And then, of course, you'll be sitting there and you will be seeing the exact Donnie Brooks set transformed to the stage of the Sheldon Concert Hall. And the live performance of Donny Brook for that Thursday night, it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. So if you've been to Donny Bash before, you know what I'm talking about, and we would welcome you again with open arms. If you've never been to Donny Bash, what are you waiting for? It is a great experience. So if you've always enjoyed Donny Brook, come on and join us for Donny Bash. That date, once again, is Thursday, June 15th of next year. And it may seem like it's a long way off, but that time rolls around so quickly. So don't put it off. Get, take care of somebody special on a gift list, whether it's a holiday is coming up or a special birthday or anniversary. We want to see you there. Well, guess who is here right now? And they're in the studio right next door. Are, they are the folks from Donny Brook, and my good friend Kate Durbin is with them. Let's join those guys right now. Well, I am pleased to once again be sitting at the Donny Brook table with the Donny Brookers, and you know, we were talking off air about the program having been on for at least 35 years, and uh, you were remembering that because... 
because my son is 35. Yeah. And he he wasn't yet born when we first came out. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. And you were there from the very beginning, right? Yeah, and I was I was like in junior high. So. <laughs> That's right. I, I, well, I was going to say, like your son, I was not yet born, which is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, uh. Well, I, I have a question. Was, was there ever a sixth panelist on the program when no, Ann no. Keith came that. back once? Because no. someone told oh, me, like, a reliable source, have, have that won? for a few programs they had six panelists when... Mark Vittert returned from Switzerland, and Ann Keith was on the program. I, I have vague recollection of that, but I don't know. B Bill, mm -hmm. I, I, well, I, I, my, my recollection is vaguer than yours, Rick. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I don't remember I don't ever know. having a six. I remember I I Ann can't. and Mark yeah. both being on, I but I can't believe that Mr. Dugan would have. He, that would not stand. He had a very he had a very precise formula. I can't mm. imagine that. Right, right. I mean, right. right? I don't know. Now, now the only person that Mr. Dugan would ever defer to was Ann Keith. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, we would we would go out after the show and have a drink, and Ann would say to me like, "Bill, what do you think of this?" And it'd be saloon talk, and I go, "Well, blah blah blah." She go. Is that what you think? <laughs> and I go, no, of course not. <laughs> and, and, and what should I think? And Martin Tell was the same way. I mean, everyone deferred to Anne. Everybody. We yeah. still do. And she's been yeah, gone right, yeah. for 18 or eight, eight or 10 years, I no, think. Well, Ray, yeah. saw, Ray saw her last. I did. I think still miss her. But yeah, she's. Yeah, boy, she was a huge I, oh, I thought it was part of this. You may be right. You may be yeah. right. I don't know. But it's been, mm -hmm. yeah, so we miss her. Well, the so people much. who were initially here on Donnie Brook were people who were from different parts of the media, different backgrounds, different. Mostly print, actually. Mostly print. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And, well, except Ann. Except for Ann. But she was, she was the queen. She right. was it when it came to talk radio. Right. Well, in the very mm -hmm. beginning, it was. Martin Dugan, mm -hmm. Rich Coster, right. who had been from the Globe but was then a Channel 5, mm -hmm. and Mark Vittert from the Business Journal, and they recruited Ray and I. Right. When did right. Ray, and when Ray did, was with RFT at the time. When did Ray's mullet join the program? Was that, <laughs> was that at that time? Everybody still talks about the mullet. When they talk about the early days, they're like, can you get over that mullet? So that's worth coming to Donnie. Are, are you everyone? No, I still, <laughs> no, I swear to you. Whenever we have those old photographs on the right. Nine PBS website, people say, "I remember that," and I mostly remember Ray's mullet. Well, right. a lot of that things have changed oh. since then, but one of the things that has remained is that we depend on our viewers in order to fund the programming here, including Donnie Brook. Um, we're going to go back over to Marianne in just a moment. And she's going to tell you how you can be a part of Donnie Bash, the event that celebrates all right. things. In Donnie honor Brooke. of Ann Keefe and Ray's mullet. Please, <laughs> Please pull that check out. Call right now. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Help, Marianne. Okay, thank you all. And uh, one of the points that uh, the guys from Donnie Brook have said before, which I really love, they say, if you've been to Donnie Bash before, come on back another time. Chances are they will remember you and they love to see familiar faces. So if you've been before, don't be shy, come on back. And if you've never been, uh, you don't know what you're missing. If you like Donnie Brook, you're gonna just love Donnie Bash. And once again, it's at the Sheldon Concert Hall. The date is Thursday, June 15th of next year. And it's gonna be coming up before you know it. And there are two ways that you can be there and still support great programming, just like Donnie Brook. Uh, the tickets are $75 a piece, and at $75, you've got your choice of either a ticket to Donnie Bash, or you can have the 9 PBS mug. Now, the best deal of all that I think is when you become a sustaining member of 9 PBS, at just $12 a month, you will receive not one, but two tickets to Donnie Bash, plus you will receive that beautiful 9 PBS coffee mug. And it's a great way to show off that you support the wonderful programs here on the 9 Network. Also, a reminder that when you become a sustaining member at that $12 a month level, you'll also have access to 9 Passport. And 9 Passport just has uh, so many programs that you can access and watch them anytime, anywhere. And that's one of the best things about being a member of 9PBS. And of course, you're supporting great programs. And this program, Donnie Brook,
that has lasted for 35 years. It's often been imitated, but never quite duplicated. Other cities have tried a Donnybrook of their own, none of them as successful as our Donnybrook. So thank you and give us a call right now. Okay, so we'll see you at the Sheldon in June. Let's move on to Brentwood, Missouri, the city of warmth, Bill McClellan, where officials there are planning a $400 million development that'll have a microbrewery, 600 apartment units, some retail. Uh, they'll also have some light manufacturing, probably some office, and it's gonna go right down Manchester Road near Hanley. You guys were talking last week in my absence about a big $1.2 billion project south of downtown on Shoto's Landing. Well, what do you think of this project for Brentwood? Well, this is essentially the project that the same developer had for Webster Groves that got voted out, and they moved it over to Brentwood. And I th like the idea. I mean, I'd like to be for something. I'm always against it. The only problem I have with this is eminent domain. You know, the idea of taking uh, what's already a standing business and giving the developer the right to take it by eminent domain, except for that, I think it's a, uh, a good idea. And the flood mitigation, you know, the big worry about flooding on Manchester, uh, we all know a fellow who lives in that area, and he said the flood mitigation worked, one of, one of the crew that his basement did not flood. So, except for eminent domain, I think this is a great idea. You are yeah. all silver lining sides. I, no, I, 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 I actually, right. my view of it is, I'm really, a, to me, it's about local control. In other words, whatever Brentwood wants to decide for its community, I mean, we are all cheering on Webster, because we know Webster, and just, the I just, kind of a knee-jerk reaction was for Webster. It's like, yeah, way to go, way to stand up to the corporate guys. In this case, it's really up to people of Brentwood. They gotta make, I agree with you about uh, eminent domain. If they want it, it's it's their community. I think, the, I don't think that, and I don't like our balkanization, but I think when it comes to your c cities, to what we have, I think they've gotta make the call well, based on their that, needs. But I just, I didn't like the location where they wanted to put it in Webster. I thought it was a little too historic to put right. it there. That, I thought that, it was in the agree. wrong place. Now, this is where good. they wanna put it in Brentwood, it's kinda like, well, it's kinda almost developed like that. And I do feel for if you got a business, but at the same time, you know, like, hey, we all have our prize. Uh, so, I'm not really against it, but you're right. It's up to the folks in Brentwood yeah, to say no. yay or Hang nay. Hang on a second, yeah, okay. Right. Uh, I like Brentwood, lived there for 10 years. The mayor there, Dave Dimmitt, great guy. Seems like a really decent individual and a good administrator and all that. But I have always thought that Manchester Road was the home of the little shop where it could be a fly fishing operation or Schiller's camera or the train wreck saloon and everything in the world you could get there. And I'm just concerned that Manchester Road, like so many other parts of St. Louis, Rock Hill right now, you know, you'll get the franchise that's, that's based right. in Omaha, right. and the architecture will be less than original. And I don't know. I just I, I like it the way it is. You I, won't be able I love to Carl's drive. It is Carl safe? I don't know. You won't this be able to distinguish. It's, between it's, between it's, it's farther. It's, it's farther. farther. But Brent that's that's East. what I like. The little I, I St. Louis no, no, no. That's what I'm saying, Charlie. If it was closer to that, right. I would have a problem with that. Is but where it's located. Right that stretch okay. there. Well, see, I, well, I feel, I, you know, I think that a couple of weeks ago, we were all in favor of letting the citizens of Manchester next April and, yeah. decide about the annexation. And I, so I, I agree. It, I, hate, I hate to always say that I, when I agree with Ray, but I agree with Ray. Let, okay. let Brentwood, it's but, up to Brentwood. But what if sorry, are, I'm okay. sorry. Nothing what if there are it. tax breaks for this developer and he lures, uh, let's say, retail from another city or town? And so the net effect then is that sales taxes overall in the region go down, which they've been doing for 20 yeah. years. Like, we're not if getting we're just anywhere. Changing socks. And, and speaking of the <laughs> I mean, housing, 600 units of, of affordable. 600 units of apartment housing, how much well, of it will be affordable? You talk about this For, developer. This, I, this is a local, Greet Street is a very prosperous and pretty respected developer. They're, they're tied in with the folks, I believe, at least on some projects in Greater St. Louis and so forth, and, and they at least working with them on some of those kinds of things. And, and this is a very prominent uh, developer. I, I don't think we should 
look, if they if they are bringing how many apartment units is that? Six hundred. If they bring in six hundred apartment units, then the services that those people need will follow. And if they're if they're picturesque family businesses of which there aren't many left, mm -hmm. great. But but I don't. We don't know. A lot of times, these developers, you don't know for I mean, sure. We, that got, That is located. I would, Alvin, though, you know, it's in an area where you're not really changing the character of that part of Manchester to do this. So I think it's, it's again, it's up to them. You know them. what? I, I will still it's, say, guys, I think we in St. Louis love these huge developments. It's got to be real big. I don't. Big. Didn't, I don't. We didn't it's for better the longest to have, time. I, don't. No, I no. think people realize From, it's futile. We saw it happen in Brentwood. We saw it happen with the airport. It happens all the time. These families, these little businesses are always plowed Well, under. we didn't get a chance no, to I vote. Mean, it. We've got one going in on Kirkwood Road, okay? Not as large as this development, but, you know, a bank's getting taken out, and it's right there, right on Kirkwood Road. I was against it. City Council passed it. Now, it's up to us maybe to hold it against those that voted for it next time they run for election, all right? I'm, I'm just saying that it's 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 up right. to the individual municipality to take the action okay. needed that they should Charlie, you act like... You can do it. Okay, and so it's, maybe it's just a matter of taste, but I... I long for Bob's Seafood, which is gone, and a Costco is going to replace it at University We City. all do. Well, and, and Kyle's driving. I mean, that hurts to hear that. That's, that's, but they're and, not. And, and, it's not even here. Right, right. right. But, so that's that's not, but it'll be yeah. next. Tiffany it'll be next. I thought it was say. already... No, it's there. <laughs> it still has the Webster side. Did, the did we learn side. nothing from like? It does. Okay, Kirkwood, right. downtown Kirkwood, one of the most livable areas, yeah. right? And it's all organic, one store at a time. It's not one big development, but, but right? Wait, no, the same is true no, for no, South one, Grand, wait, Greenwich one Village. One is That's being built at want Washington one. and Kirkwood Road. One is being built right now bothers me. This thing in Brentwood doesn't bother That's me. That's because that, you live in Kirkwood. No, you no. think everything has to be judged separately. All right, well, let me talk about. Um, Schnooks with you. South Grand is the location, Alvin, for our next controversy, where the owner of Schnooks is complaining about the vagrancy, the drinking, the public urination, the knife fights outside of the Schnooks. I'm, I'm sorry. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was talking about us <laughs> ringing bells for the Salvation <laughs> Army. But right, this is not joking. Aside right, from yeah. us. No, they, they have a problem with the neighborhood. And uh, the local alderman there, Megan Green, who's running for president of the board, says, hey, Schnooks should throw in an extra $20,000 for the community investment district. After all, it's worked so well in downtown St. Louis. You know, let's do one and have the businesses contribute to it on South Grand. And Schnucks is saying, we already spend a half a million dollars a year on security. Whose side are you on this one? I, I'm, I'm kind of going to be with Megan Green on this one, all right? And I know Schnucks is not made of money, but boy, they make a lot of it, okay? And if we're talking about $20,000 and you want to call it a shakedown, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't disagree. But, but if, if 20 k brings peace, then I think... Schnucks should write the check. Well, let, 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 let me argue. Uh, no, okay, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. You, you know, the executive director, Rebecca Witt, I think her name is, of the South Grand Business Association, been there 16 years, and she said things have never been this bad. We need more police. And Megan Green says, well, you know, just like the mayor says, we have enough police. And I think, how can we have enough police? There's neighborhoods on the north side we've given up on. Downtown... The building that uh, that AT&T tower that sold for 204 million just sold for four million. Right. And now we've got South Grand under siege, and and we have the officials telling us we have enough police. But we're trying well, to protect. We a, we're we're trying place. to protect a property. I don't know. Like it you're would, trying to yeah. protect your tax base it, and the jobs. But, but but the more police thing. Well, what what? So that means that two police. Are always on the parking lot at the Schnooks? I, no, I, I think that they just need s more security all along South Grand. Perception, it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's a bigger story than just Schnooks. Perception right. is That's reality. And the, the, the Jones administration spokesperson who was quoted, if I, did not, if I didn't misinterpret his quote, he said, we're spending millions of dollars or we're spending, you know, we're spending a lot of money looking at the root causes of crime. What does that do for the business owners whose, you know, employees, whose physical f facilities feel like they are under siege. Well, if I have that a smaller business now. and I have the same problem, I think we're not discussing it. I think we're discussing it because it's schnooks. Now, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but I'm just saying that I think this is because it involves a schnooks. It's getting a lot of attention, and schnooks 
has the money to pay the 20k. I don't know if that will deliver peace. Over but it's 500 thousand. I understand. Well, 500 thousand dollars in security. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, if if we don't make people who own businesses, if we don't make neighbors feel safe. We're on borrowed time, and we talk so much about food deserts in North City. We could end up having food deserts in South City if right. this is the way you treat grocery store chains. I mean, I, I'm just saying that's a possibility. Uh, everybody's right. Um, I mean, I think you're uh, absolutely, Bacon Green is fine asking for the 20 grand, and it's, they can get that out of their couch cushions. So I think that's fine. But you I, certainly I, are generous with other well, people's I, money. Well, that's what's called being a liberal. Mm. Yes, um, I am aware. But other people's money. No, the I do think that the South Grand Association is absolutely also right in saying we need more police. I mean, there's no question about that. Now, I don't agree. That doesn't necess It doesn't follow, and this is where these arguments always break down, that we should give up on shifting, which we all agreed on after the George Floyd thing, of shift, you can walk and chew gum, let's use that old... old well, what term. point are you trying to make? Well, that we can still work on addressing the causes of crime. We can still try to do, you know... But that's long-term. We have and, a, and, and I said, it's long I said you can do both. You can add police where they're needed in the short run. It's not either or. The pro, the, peop, the people who want only police, I think, are wrong. But we don't, but we just want... We, I'm, I'm saying, I agree. So, okay. We yeah. need more police, but you can't give up on addressing the crime. Uh, the, so I'm spending everybody's money, I guess. You cannot... It is valid that we have to keep focused on the long-term solutions at the same time. You do. All right. Let's take a break here. But first, uh, we'll ask you to join us for the next Donnie Bash. And here are more of the details. You never quite know what is going to be talked about on Donnie Brook, and you never quite know who's going to say once when you expect a particular panelist to come down on one side of an issue, boom, there can be a surprise, and it's something else completely. What would be better than watching it on your television screen would to be see would be to see it happen live, and you have an opportunity to do that. As a member, when you join us right now for $75, we will send you a ticket for Donnie Bash at the Sheldon Concert Hall. That's Thursday, June 15th at 6 p.m. That's when the party starts at 6 p.m. at 7 o'clock. Well, by then, we'll all have gathered in the um, Sheldon Hall, and it'll be a live taping it's a live taping but it will be broadcast live as well and then afterwards after it's over we'll come back out into the reception area and enjoy just a little more talk and conversation with the panelists and everybody else at the nine network you know it's it's so exciting there when you see them coming out you can kind of see which i think you can see which Audience members are rooting for which panelists. It's just a hoot. It is a lot of fun. $75 a ticket. You can get one. You can get two. You, get, you can get three. Just let us know what you're interested in, and the volunteer will sign you up for that dollar amount. Or you can join us at $12 a month as an ongoing monthly sustainers. And for that, you'll get two tickets plus the mug. So really, that's kind of the deal of the evening. So please give us a call or text GIVE to 800-568-9099. Or if you'd like, you can go to ninepbs.org. Either way, please give us your support right now. We're going to go back into the studio where the Donnybrookers are ready to talk some more. And you know, gentlemen and lady, I bet if I asked you all what was your favorite part about Donny Bash, I probably get different answers from everybody. What do you think? I think it's just meeting people and talking, yeah. having great conversations. And you know, um, <laughs> people who show up for Donny Bash are intelligent, hot, way above average, of course. Right. And the conversations are really fun and interesting. And if you like to, uh, if you like people, I think you really like Donny Bash. And it's sort of always been a reflection of what this show tries to be, and that is disagreeing without being disagreeable. And yes. you see that at the Donnie Bash uh, events. Well, I think it was, we all, it, it's like family, but we hadn't seen our family in two years. Right. And I think everybody was a little oh. extra cordial and a little sure. extra just, just happy to be back together again. And I know I felt that way that, um, yeah, we're gonna do a thing and, and do yeah. our show and it's the same, 
But it was a little different. It, it, he literally wanted to give everybody a hug. Oh, and so like, man, especially sure. the people that come all the time. And so like, it really is good to see you. And that's one yeah. thing is because you encourage people to come more than once. Oh, well, oh, I think, gosh, you know what? I think they do that on their own. That's right. <laughs> And we're not taking credit for that, but a lot of people just have always returned. And I will meet people that I have never met before. And one of the things they will tell me is, like, we've come, like, three times. So I was like, oh, wow. So, you know, I, I can't, I don't think we can take credit for that. I think Channel 9 can take uh, oh. credit. Oh. Well, what, what I like best about it mm -hmm. is my grandchildren come, <laughs> and I feel like a big deal. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, and Evie, my granddaughter, the last two times has been allowed to ask the last question. Oh, no. And, yes. and like the, at this last time, oh. she said, my, my question is, where is the best ice cream coach <laughs> in town? And I said, Crown Candy. And, oh. and I'm taking you there. Oh. And, and a Andy Candy from Crown Candy was there. Yeah. Was there. Oh, no and kidding. so my granddaughter got to meet Andy, and I just felt like a big deal. Yes. Oh, so, yeah. I can't tell you. Well, yeah. for me, my favorite part is watching our viewers talk to these four and then yeah. checking out their reaction when they walk away, like rolling their eyes. And, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just making that up. Well, right. nobody talks to me, so oh, I just get to. No, no, oh, I actually, it is meeting our viewers. At Bill's, at Bill's grandchildren do steal the show. Oh, they are, oh, they are pretty pretty Well, well, at, none of you guys feel like you can bully me too much. At, <laughs> no <laughs> kidding. Because there's a human Evie and Kino in the front row. With their like, little lips quivering. They're going, oh. why are they so mean why to my so grandfather? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, why are they picking on Coach? Yeah, it's like a human shield. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So right, like, Winnie, you'll be next with the, with the cute grandma. Yeah, that's right. You guys have questions. I'll right. bring them, you know. Oh. All right. Speaking of the kids, I just want yeah. to say something. Yeah. Drawn in, new. Yes. Well, we got this partner, yeah. and like, it's not just us. It's all Channel Nine that you're supporting, and mm -hmm. things like this and the different projects are so important. So, you may not can't stand us, but <laughs> please <laughs> dial the number and, and support just... Drawn In and all the projects that we've got going on at Channel Nine <laughs> because it is absolutely the best PBS station in the United States of America. Well, and you know, and we talked about how the fact that other cities have tried to to have a Donnie Brook program and it just doesn't work. So, this is so unique, isn't it? And to add to what Alvin's saying, there's never been a more important time in our history mm -hmm. to, than, right. for, than PBS is more important, I think, than ever. And since it's, and it's always been important. Mm -hmm. so. And I think I, we I all really agree. Think. Yes, and that is where you come in. And Kate is standing by to tell you more about becoming a member of 9PBS. Well, I think you all really said it. I mean, <laughs> we are here because people like you do become members, and uh, we take that really, really seriously. We are licensed to the community. 85% of our funds come directly from the community, and we do feel responsible to bring you the best the television has to offer by being part of the community, by reaching out to the community, by trying to, well, one of our taglines uh, tells uh, stories that move us, right? Stories that move us. And the way that we can tell stories that move us is to know what you want and to engage with you. Your funds, your dollars as a member of 9PBS allow us to pursue that goal as we become bigger and better year after year after year. Now, the way you can do that right now is by giving us a call and joining us for a one-time contribution of $75. And with that $75, you can get a ticket to Donnie Bash on June 15th at 6 p.m. or the mug, whichever you'd like. Uh, if you'd like two tickets, that would be $150. Just talk to the volunteers. They can help you out. Or you can join us as a sustaining member. And as a sustaining member, $12 a month will come here to the station. That helps us budget and plan. You will receive two tickets to Donnie Bash and the mug. Again, Donnie Bash is a pre-party, the live show where you'll see at the Sheldon, and then the after party. Please give us a call right now.
Thanks so much. We'll see you at the Sheldon in June. Alvin Reed, I think you and I both agree that this latest law that's going to go into effect August 28th is reprehensible. It would jail librarians if they issue materials that are sexually explicit, with exceptions for materials that are anthropological, scientific, or of artistic merit. So I guess Gauguin and the National Geographic are spared in this particular case. But otherwise, a librarian could be fined hundreds of dollars or put in jail for a year if that librarian's at a school that issues that material. And I, I'm against that law. I think it's uh, suppressing expression and all that and more. But I think it's also part of a larger thing that's going on in society right now where people on both sides are saying, I don't like your opinion. I want to suppress it. Do you agree with that? Well, I, let me, no, I don't. I think this is so far beyond that. Okay, we do have a cancel culture. I think it works both ways. This is beyond that. This is building a bonfire and throwing books on it, okay? And then picking who we gonna throw on the fire next, all right? This, this is beyond absurd. This is dangerous. And this must be stopped now. This is, listen, this will, liberal people and can say all they want to, but this is gonna take conservative people to stand up and say enough is enough. Well, I, I agree is, with this that. This is dangerous. I agree right. with that, but at the same time, it seems like organizations only complain when their ox, their own ox, yeah. is being no, bored. No, no. The library, I, yeah. the library is everybody's. Books are everybody's. Yes, yeah, but it's also true. For example, well, let's go back to Wash U last year when there was a guy who was left of center who picked up all the flags of those that were deposited by the Young Americans for Freedom or the mm -hmm. Republicans on campus. At that point, all of the liberals should have stood up and said, no, you can't, you you can't, can't suppress their hey, expression. Hey, we did. Ma many of us we liberals did, did stand yeah, I did. And, say, and say this was ridiculous yeah. Yeah. I, on this very right, show. On the show. But what Alva is saying is right. This is not a time for false equivalencies exactly. and saying everybody's wrong no. on this. Th this right. is a time for saying that this is a ridiculous law uh, to be able to put librarians in jail. We're talking about I, I just putting a librarian in jail. Yeah. Say, say that out loud. I am willing to put a librarian okay. in jail. Well, I'll give you like, another example. Oh most recently, the, most recently, uh, we know that Alex Berenson, former reporter for the New York Times, who was writing things that the White House didn't agree with on COVID, and maybe we wouldn't agree with it either, the White House asks Twitter to get to ban him from their website, and Charlie, they do. Charlie, uh, again, there was a time when the ACLU right. defended the Nazis marching through Skokie, right, right. or Bob Herman. And they still would. No, no, I don't think yes, so. They not, would. Not this ACLU. Yes, they would. Or right. Bob Herman, wasn't he the great civil rights attorney who defended right. the KKK to pick up the litter right, on right, Highway 55? Right. People, the right has to defend the left, and the, and the left, left has, has to defend, defend the right, right okay. when it comes to matters of free but, expression. But actually, no... I was, for okay. whatever reason, I, I was reading an article about Ted Koppel, mm -hmm. and he was, he, he was very, very concerned about the fact that under, because the, the Trump administration was considered, you know, the, the outlier of all time, that, that, that commentary had become reporting and that opinion had become reporting or or vice versa and i think i think you i think you are right about that however when it comes to librarians and i think we have to think about what of our what are our priorities you know we have to keep children safe y you know we're not we're not thinking about Uvalde and and those kinds of things. Somehow we're thinking about librarians and throwing librarians in jail. It's crazy. It's Absolutely. Charlie, Charlie. I mean, Charlie listen, can I say something? You're talking about like it, it's not a climate control discussion. Okay. If somebody dumped a thousand gallons of antifreeze in the water table, okay? It, there, there's no discussion about that. This is just like literally like toxic, dangerous. Non-American, nonsensical. Charlie, yeah. it's not. I, I, I'm not woke, and I'm reminded by woke progressives a lot that I'm not because I'm not. I I've been opposed. I'm an ACLU type. I agree that that organization has changed a bit, but but I definitely have been against campus speech codes, all that stuff forever. But 
this is, as Alvin pointed out, everybody's pointing out, there's a huge difference when you start talking about our public libraries and you're talking about... School libraries. Our school yeah. libraries. Our school, right, right. school yeah. but they're public. Understood. I agree. They're, I agree there is a huge constitutional difference when you start talking about censorship mm -hmm. at our public institutions. It's got nothing to do with the hypocrisy of one side. I, I don't disagree that both sides have hypocrisy, but this is absolutely a threat to our democracy when you start so banning is that, books. But, but, no, but it's not what a you're threat saying. to our democracy when somebody... the hypocrisy on both sides is also no, it's, a threat. It's, it's not a threat. No. Hypocrisy right. is Maybe always... Not as pressing. When, when it's, I, we've that's always all I'm going to say. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that, right. if you're a librarian out there, please continue doing what you're yeah, doing. Right. I will come down there and get you out of jail. <laughs> I will bail you out. I will find Ben Crump, F. Lee Bailey, whoever. we got to fight. We have to fight. Ray, I want to ask you about EV charging stations, electric vehicle charging stations. The state is going to spend about $100 million federal dollars to build EV charging stations around the state. Right. And uh, I, I have a question for you, though. If 75% of the electricity in this state is generated by coal, what's the great benefit of EV charging stations? Because EV electric vehicles are the future. You, you make a good argument just like the candle makers did against electricity. But the fact is... No, no. You know, burning coal is considered the, the dirtiest it way to it generate is. It is. energy. Our, first of all, I, I, I'm guessing, no, in Missouri, that there'll be very little, if any, fed, uh, Missouri dollars spent on anything. That's correct. And, and that's sad because electric vehicles, which may not be for everybody now, a lot of us might have problems with the how... It's a, it's a chicken and an egg. You have to have the charging stations to make it suitable for people to have them. And I'm not sure, you know, if we're there yet in terms of every single buyer. But I will say, electric vehicles and getting off of fossil fuels is the future. future and, and yes, we will. And we will but, get there. And you're, you're okay. arguing well, for I'd yesterday's like, I'd technology. like to get in, in my powerful four-cylinder car and... and Drive at 65 miles an hour, right? Knock yourself out. And no one's saying you can't, but down the road, this is the future, and we could either be part of it or not part they of it. They said that about the metric system. No, but our kids are going to have electric cars. This I is mean, going that's to just, be the future. That's a I, fact. I, I, I agree. The and right. okay. right. and, and, and what's going to generate that electricity? Um... Wind? Wind? Oh. So, uh, really? Uh, as, well, the, as the, it, the man with the daughter who worked at the nuclear power plant. Nuclear power. Nuclear power. Well, I would like the nuclear power. Well, well great, but the point it's is we're going to move. It's, it, you keep it, saying. It sounds good. It sounds good. But in reality, we're so what burning do you think? coal. No. So we're what, is that coal. good? Do you just want to burn more coal? I, I'm just saying. No, you think it's good? dollars for what? The new technology will be coal fusion or solar or something. Yeah, well. This oh, electric yeah. car thing won't last forever. I, I don't know it about charging forever. state. You think no, we're going to be using the same? So it's just a fact. I don't a know if there is. The, I don't think electric cars. Car, it always car. depends on political people. will and whether there is enough political will you, for this kind of blowback. And there is going to be. You really be think that we're getting the wrap-up sign? So uh, we have to obey orders and uh, take a break here, but we'll tell you how you can join us in just a moment at the next Donnie Bash. Meanwhile, you can jump in on the conversation by sending your letters to 9PBS, zip code 63108. Don't forget those emails, Donnybrook at 9PBS.org, and we love those tweets, hashtag DonnybrookSTL. We also invite you to call the wine line, or should we say the nine line? It's our comment line at 314-512-9094. And you can listen to Donnie Brook on your favorite podcast. I did that this afternoon, as a matter of fact. Spotify, TuneIn, Google Play, and Apple, the place to be. Thanks so much for joining us, but don't dare, under any circumstances, touch that <laughs> dial or that clicker, because we're not going away, really. Donnie Brook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.
Well, what could be better than enjoying Donnybrook right there in the comfort of your own home? How about being with a live audience watching a taping and a broadcast of Donnybrook? Well, we have a date because we do this annually now here at 9 PBS and we want you to be part of it. The date for next year is a Thursday, it's June 15th of 2023. And of course, at our favorite venue, the Sheldon Concert Hall. And what's wonderful, and I think you're seeing a little, some of the pictures of this, you actually will be sitting, watching, and looking at the actual Donnybrook set because they transfer that to the Sheldon Concert Hall. Uh, it's such a fun time. The doors open at 5.30. There are refreshments before the taping and broadcast, and then refreshments and get together afterwards. And the folks from Donnybrook, you know, they, they are not shy. They're there for all of it. Now, there are two ways that you can be there in the audience for Donny Bash next year. At $75, you can either have one ticket to Donny Bash or your choice of the 9 PBS mug, but the best way to be there is to become a sustaining member of 9 PBS at $12 a month. You'll receive not one, but two tickets to Donny Bash for that Thursday, June 15th, and you'll also receive the 9 PBS mug. Now, of course, we offer uh, these, these gifts online as well. You can go to 9pbs.org, that's N-I-N-E-P-B-S.org, or give us a call at 1-800-568-9099. Well, the folks from Donnybrook are just next door in that studio. My good friend Kate Durbin is with them at the round table. Let's join them right now. I just have to say, there was five seconds of silence before we came on the air. We got kind of Don't quiet. We're yeah. going to be quiet. Yeah. And then people started whispering. Yeah. Because these guys always have something to say about whatever <laughs> is going yeah. on yeah. and cannot hold it I in. think even if they conked us on the head, our mouths would just keep just moving, keep, right? Keep, keep like, moving. Right. Charlie, <laughs> as a provocateur, okay, what do you think or, yeah, what qualities do you think make for good analysts? Oh, well, obviously, knowledgeable, lots of charm, good looks, wit. <laughs> but no, obviously, the knowledge about the St. Louis area. And I think mm -hmm. that's really key that these four individuals here know where the bones are buried. And you combine their years of service in this town, it's really unmatched. And I don't think there's any other outlet on broadcast that is discussing the news of the week with four seasoned veterans like we have here on Donnerbrook. So it's, it's, it's they're, you know, they are all in the Hall of Fame for talk yeah. television here in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Television. Wow. And let's say, I mean, that's a new I thing. We're on talk television. Talk right. television. Right. Talk television. Right. You coined a new phrase. I yep. didn't know. I'm on yep. talk television. Well, I don't right. think we can say the four veterans. I think we need to say the fifth. five. The five. Well, possibly yeah. so. Yeah. As you're in there. Yeah. I was going to jump in and point out that last mm -hmm. year, this year, we had the uh, Donnie Bash in June for the first time. Right. Used to be in the fall. And I think June mm -hmm. is so much better. You know, it's just it's easier to drive and everything, and it's a nice place. Generally speaking, June is very pleasant in St. Louis, and it's just a great time. Nothing wrong with October, November, but I do remember some really cold, rainy Donny Bash evenings. And hopefully, we won't have rainy and cold in June next year. Yeah, yeah, I've been to several. I don't remember it being rainy and cold because what I remember is how much fun it yeah, always it's just was. Such yeah. fun. Yeah, it is such fun. Now, when when that happens at, at Donnie Bash and everybody's getting there, what time do you all get there? You know, the, the audience is invited at 6. What time do you guys show up? 5 to 7? 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, pretty much. The night before. We, Charlie yeah, wants yeah. us all there at about 4 o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In our place. Because we do schmooze with the viewers prior to the show. Well, that's what I was getting at. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's a key element of this uh, Donnie Bash production, and that is that we meet and greet right. with everybody for about an hour or so beforehand and another hour after. Right. And so you have to have your time together before meeting with the audience to know what the topics for the evening are going to be, et cetera. And, and uh, the Good Channel 9 folks uh, had us out on... Uh, um, not Twitter, but uh, Instagram, and asked us questions and whatnot, and which oh, several yeah. of us went viral. 
for our answers and I thought like this is kind of cool right so <laughs> now it's a fun evening from from beginning to end we're there before and we're there after with the audience we thank them so much for coming and thank them for supporting Channel 9 and having fun with us because it's and, a fun and night. To that, and to that point, it's time to go back to Marianne and she's going to tell you exactly how you can get tickets to June's Donny Bash. It is so easy. You can pay $75 for one ticket or you also have your chance at $75 to choose the 9 PBS mug. Now, the best deal though going is to become a sustaining member of 9PBS at $12 a month. And in exchange for that, you get not one, but two tickets to Donnie Bash on that Thursday, June 15th. Plus, you get one of the 9PBS mugs. So all of that wrapped up in a great thank you gift package for you for supporting great programming here on 9PBS. And also don't forget, that you will receive Nine Magazine for the full year of your membership. You will also have access to Nine Passport, which a lot of our members say is just wonderful. It gives you countless programs that you can watch anywhere, anytime. And don't forget you can join us online at 9pbs.org. That's N-I-N-E-P-B-S dot org. Or you can also call us at 1-800-568-9099. The choice is yours. But make sure that you become a member and show your support of great programming like Donnie Brook on 9PBS because we cannot do it without you. And isn't that wonderful to know that you are part of making television history and keeping the great legacy of fabulous programming alive right here. Thank you. Thank you.